this is really a one-of-a-kind event for Yuba City. We, I don't think we've ever had this many famous people in, in our presence, and we're, we are truly honored. That being said, I would like to introduce the superstar of YouTube. <laughs> and everybody knows uh, a true American, Wild Bill for America. Wild Bill? Thank you very much. Well, hello, everybody, and thank you so much for inviting me here today. Now, I travel and speak to groups all over the country, and everywhere I go, I find two things. One is that men and women of faith are standing up and courageously declaring that we are one nation under God, whether the bad guys like it or not. The other thing I find everywhere I go is that Chris Ann Hall has already been there. I think the only way to slow her down is for somebody to give her a job, and I'm thinking Attorney General for the state of Jefferson. <laughs> Make no mistake about it, we are in the Super Bowl of all battles for the heart and soul of America. Ronald Reagan once said, if we ever forget that we are a nation under God, we will be a nation gone under. Never before in the history of this nation has faith in God been so endangered in our culture. The Christian church in America has been shamefully silent as immorality and perversion has swept across this nation, and the people pushing it are now targeting our youngest children. Truly, that is a sign of a nation that is going under. There's only one way to keep this nation from going under, and that is for the Christian church to come out from behind closed doors to get into the fray. Yeah. The enemies of faith say that we have no right to bring the word of God into the public schools or into city hall. The courts are against us. Hollywood is against us. The education system is against us. Most of the media is against us. But guess who's for us? <laughs> Phillips, Craig, and Dean had a song out a few years ago that said, for a time such as this, we've been born, we've been blessed. For a time such as this. If you are a Christian man or a woman, everything in your life has been leading you up to these days. There are no spectators in this battle. You're in it. And what a great time to be a Christian in America. What a privilege to have been chosen by the King of Kings to be a part of the team that is going to stand firm as the storm clouds of persecution come rolling across this country. The enemies of faith have no fear of us. So far they have been able to silence American Christians just by calling us names. Bigot, hate monger, homophobe, narrow-minded religious fanatic. How many people here have been called names like that simply because you love God? Yeah. You know where that narrow-minded accusation comes from, don't you? It comes from Matthew chapter 7 where Jesus himself said that broad is the way that leads to destruction, narrow is the way that leads to life, and few find it. When the enemies of faith call you narrow-minded, they are accusing you of believing the Bible accusing you of being a follower of Jesus Christ. Don't ever be ashamed of that. Yeah. Oh yes, those mean, nasty people have done a good job of silencing the Christian message in America. Why is it so easy for the enemies of faith to do that? Well, I am convinced that many Christians don't really understand what our responsibilities are as ambassadors of Christ. Yes, 1 Corinthians tells us that we are the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Think about that. An ambassador is a high-ranking dignitary charged with faithfully representing the interests of the king. 
As ambassadors, we have been way too shy about representing our king. A lot of us mutter things like, well, I guess we are supposed to be as harmless as doves, and we quietly withdraw from the debate. Kind of reminds me of the chickens I had down in Florida. At sundown, I would just herd them into the chicken coop and close them in. Is that what the enemies of faith have done to the Christian church in America? Have they herded us out of the public square and into our church buildings? The king we represent told us to let our light shine before men. And he said, you don't light a lamp and then put it under a basket. No, you put it on a lampstand where everybody can see it. We are really good at shining our light every Sunday morning behind closed doors where the people out there who most desperately need to hear the message cannot see us or hear us. I fear that America's church buildings have become the basket that's hiding the light. Since about 1962, a tsunami of anti-God attitudes has swept our nation. The traditional faith upon which our founding fathers built this nation has been beaten down unmercifully, and Christians have been ridiculed out of the public debate. The enemies of faith identified positions where their anti-God poison would be most effective. The public schools, the news media, the courts, Hollywood, and they needed a political party that they could mold into a juggernaut of immorality and corruption. They chose the Democrat Party and made it what it is today. Our founding fathers would be nauseated by modern American culture. And the number one factor, in my opinion, that allowed such cultural garbage to sweep across our nation, the silence of the Christian church. Now, I don't need to give you a laundry list of the despicable policies that are at work in this nation today. Sexual perversion has risen to the level of fanaticism. In fact, I have no problem declaring that there is a sexual jihad going on in America, and the Christian church is the target. The enemies of God are beginning to come after our churches, our pastors, and any Christian who dares to oppose them. I was just in Idaho a few weeks ago talking with the couple that owns the hitching post. You remember what happened there? Now, Pastor Dave asked me to come here to talk about Christian courage. Well, now is the time for genuine Christians to find their courage because the enemies of God are coming for us. They intend to silence us, but America needs us. As ambassadors of Christ, we have a duty to stand firm until the King himself recalls us. Yes. Christian courage is exactly what the USA needs today more than anything else. Need an example? How about John the Baptist? After a successful career as the forerunner of the Messiah, John took on another project. You remember what that was? Publicly challenging the king for his immoral policies. John the Baptist may have very well been the very first tea partier. <laughs> Mark chapter 6 tells us that evil King Herod was very disturbed by John, but that he enjoyed listening to him. The context seems to indicate that they had multiple conversations. What did they discuss? No doubt, Herod's habit of governing in violation of God's law. Now, there are some who say that we Christians should stay out of government. They quote Romans chapter 13 that says, Subjection Let to every... the governing authorities. Some say that that means we must meekly comply with whatever the government dumps on us. <laughs> really? What do you think John the Baptist would say about that? <laughs> Jesus himself declared John the Baptist to be the greatest among men. And John gave his life standing courageously against political corruption in the name of God. Christians of America, Find your courage. Now, when I was a little boy, peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> when I was a little boy, God and country went together like peanut butter and jelly. Well, guess what else goes together like peanut butter and jelly? Christian courage and the state of Jefferson. <laughs> now, you're going to have to forgive me, but I am so excited about 
the possibilities of the state of Jefferson that I spent two days, I spent two days on homes.com looking at houses in this area. <laughs> Just in case you guys make it a reality. I cannot think of a more powerful way to push back against re the relentless tyranny that is stalking our nation. For good men and women to form a new state and say, no more. Yeah. To form a state that courageously embraces the God and country principles of the Founding Fathers. Now it's, it's painfully obvious that Washington DC is never going to clean itself up. The cleanup is going to have to come from the states. But all 50 states are under the federal hammer, and even though the 10th Amendment gives them the power, they just don't seem to have the courage to use it. Somebody has to lead the way. Perhaps state number 51 could lead the way and become and trigger and trigger a domino effect of courageous change. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. I would love to see all the pieces put in place ready to go. Let all of America see what Jefferson would stand for and be bold about it. This is the time for Christian courage and bold talk. America has heard enough milk toast political blather and I believe our nation is ready for some red meat. Yeah. Speaking of red meat, wasn't that dinner great? Yeah. Bold talk that calls people back to the biblical principles that founded this nation and were the key to this nation's success. Fasten your seatbelts. Respect for God is making a comeback in the USA. Now, please forgive me if I step on any toes. I, I know many of you have put a lot of work into the state of Jefferson, but I am excited like a little kid at Disneyland, so please allow me to fantasize a little bit about what the state of Jefferson could be. For instance, Thomas Jefferson himself once said, if the Congress fails to shield the state from dangers so palpable and imminent, the states must shield themselves and meet the invader foot to foot. I would love to see the Jefferson State Constitution include the right to defend its own borders and to repel illegal invaders. Backed up by the Jefferson Guard, a powerful defense force that answers only to the governor. A major reason immorality has become such a powerful force is federal judges usurping the will of the people and forcing immoral practices in violation of the Constitution. I recommend that the Jefferson Constitution have an appointments clause that says any federal judge appointed by the president must be approved by the governor. And if the governor for any reason withdraws that approval, that federal judge must step down immediately. <laughs> Another major problem is Washington, D.C. bureaucrats dumping tons of regulations on the citizens telling how we have to educate the children, regulate your natural resources, protect the environment. The state of Jefferson should have the authority to thank them for their suggestions while continuing to do things however the state of Jefferson wants. I call that the stuff it clause. No need to get into details. Now the next one is a biggie. Look at any map of the United States and the states are huge. But there's this little tiny speck up in the corner called Washington DC. That little speck confiscates horrendous amounts of money from every state and then doles it back out to them a little bit of time as long as the state is doing what it's told. I call that the money hammer. And frankly, the wrong people are holding the money hammer. Yeah. I would love to see the state of Jefferson organized so that all taxes collected within the state of Jefferson go first to the state coffers, and then appropriate monies are forwarded to Washington, D.C., provided Washington, D.C. is fulfilling its constitutional obligations to the state of Jefferson. <laughs> Now, 
Then and only then will the right people be holding the hammer. We, the people, would finally have control over our own government, exactly the way it was intended to be. Now, I seriously doubt that California and Washington, D.C. would ever willingly let the state of Jefferson come into existence, especially if they thought Jefferson would be emulating the Founding Fathers' respect and reverence for Jesus Christ and God's Word. In response to that, let me present you with another quote from Thomas Jefferson. He said, a little rebellion now and then is a good thing. <laughs> when the powers that be tell you that you do not have permission to form the state of Jefferson, I say do it anyway. <laughs> this nation was not formed by asking permission from tyrants. And we do not have to ask immoral men for permission to honor God in our families, in our communities, or in our state. Now is the time for Christian courage to make a comeback in America. You have an opportunity to lead the way, to do something that could change this nation for the better. In closing, let me leave you with the words of that song that I mentioned. For a time such as this, we've been born, we've been blessed. Long before time began, we were in the Father's plan. By His love, by His will, we will see the dream fulfilled. And we will rise and face the darkness. We will shine His holy light. We will live to love the hopeless. We will lift the cross of Christ. We will raise the flag of freedom, for His blood is our defense. He has called us for a time, a time such as this. Thank you so much.